1957, I think, Saba, black and white tube television. Uh, I bought this recently and I'm going to attempt to repair it. And this is a Schauensland. <laughs> is that how you pronounce it? I really don't know how to pronounce this. Schauensland 604. Got here our volume control, which is broken and rotating freely. Probably the potentiometer is frozen. This is probably tone control, horizontal and vertical. The vertical is frozen. Got here a nice, really nice feature. This is the key to turn it on and off. Contrast also frozen brightness and the tuner is also a little bit crusty it will have to be completely stripped and refinished Because there is no way that I can save this. It's completely scratched and it's stained. The grill. The, the grill and the cloth are in a pristine condition. I'm going to risk to say that the cloth has been replaced but it's i don't know it looks like the original so i really don't know it's really really pristine this is a switch that turns off the tv when you close the doors I've already been here taking a look and removed the cover off of the high voltage cage. And we have a rat nest on the flyback section. Lots of rust. It appears that the, the mice have eaten the insulation of the vertical output transformer. Because we have all that shiny copper peeking at us right there. It should be all covered in dust like the rest of the TV, but it's not. A lot of rust down in there. The neck protection thing is completely smashed. Fortunately, there was no damage. To the CRT. And we got here our million dollar eBay green cone speakers. Saba got is really famous today because of their hi fi radios from the 50s with the green cone speakers. And everything that has a green cone today is worth a million euros. So I'm glad that nobody dismantled the TV to extract the speakers. And uh, currently uh, the TV is not producing enough high voltage to display a picture. There's also no sound and I cannot hear the vertical. So I'm thinking about a fault in the power supply, maybe open filter cans, maybe bad selenium rectifier, which is down in there. That rectangular thing that says Siemens. 
or maybe both. Yeah, it really looks like it's low on low on B plus. But I can hear the whistle and I can draw some sparks off of here. This is the cap of the high voltage rectifier. But then if you come here to the inode connection, the 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 voltage is really really low so and I've already replaced this tube. I really think this is a low B plus. I'm going to check that and troubleshoot it. See if I can get it to display something, some illumination on the screen. If it does, I'm going to proceed with the restoration and repair. So I got here the chassis laying on its side. Which is a nice thing that we can do with this 1950s German TVs. The chassis comes out of the cabinet with the CRT fully attached to it. So we can tilt it 90 degrees and work on the underside of it. I have here a parts placement diagram and the schematic which is really difficult to read because it fits all in one page and I got here this point right here shows us the B plus right after the filter choke Where is it here's the filter choke yeah you cannot see it filter choke, we have a capacitor here and there's our first B plus line which should measure 250 volts so we're gonna check that we have a selenium rectifier which might be bad and these capacitors, some of them will be bad because I think that this is a low B plus, that's what it is We'll check it out. Hundred volts, see? Now I can hear the horizontal starting. Yeah, it's about half half of the voltage it should be, which indicates completely open filter capacitors. And if we click here into AC mode, we have about 100. Uh, it's jumping all over the place, but we have lots of ripple here. Let's go back to this. Let's go back to DC. Hundred volts. It should read two hundred and fifty. So yeah, I need to tack in some capacitors there, and I'll be right back. Okay, so the problem was just the, let me turn on the lights, the problem was just the crapped out selenium rectifier, right, right down in there, and I had to move the ion trap all the way to the back, and now we have a collapsed vertical, but we have some brightness. At least we have some emission from the CRT. Our B plus is still very, very low. I have two 100 microfarad capacitors just tacked in there. And I have a diode. I don't know if you can see it. Down in there, connected to the yellow crocodile clip and the red one. So the selenium rectifier is bypassed. And I have 
200 microfarads of added capacitance the B plus is, is starting to go down so I don't want to run this for a long time because our boost filter capacitor is, which is that brown cylinder right in the middle of the screen right there if that thing shorts or it's badly leaky it will overheat the flyback I just hope that the vertical output transformer is not bad it's that big one right there but we also have this vertical blocking transformer sorry about that the vertical blocking transformer right there which appears to have been chewed up by mice but I think it did not affect the copper only the insulation so uh, it's a good start at least uh, of course it turned itself off because I tripped in all this mess of wires right here but anyway we have something it's not much but now uh, all of these red red guys these are probably hunts capacitors these will have to go I'm going to test this transformer in the vertical output transformer also I'm going to recap this thing maybe maybe I'll bring the CRT tester down here see what we can get right here can you see this and this is an electrolytic capacitor and appears to have exploded it's connected to pin 2 of the PCL82 I believe that it is the cathode so that could explain if it's shorted that could explain the collapsed the collapsed vertical and we have some weird things going on here with this transformer it appears that somebody has been in here before we have a couple of poorly soldered connections over there also I need to rectify that Alright, so I'm going to bring in the CRT tester. I have here a super sketchy setup. Really sketchy. But I think it'll work. Okay, first thing, let's put this on test for shorts. That way, if anything is shorted. Hopefully, hopefully will not blow anything. Got filaments. Give it a minute to warm up. We have cutoff, which is nice. Emissions. Whoa. What? You sure? Damn. I mean, this thing's testing like a or better than a brand new tube. Really? It almost bags the meter. Sure. Sure, I connected everything right. Black wire is the cathode. Oops. Into there. Yeah, we got 
the yellow is G1, and this pretty long bastard is G2, and the red ones are filaments. Really? No, this is almost too good to be true. Right now it's begging the mirror. Damn. Here's the schematic for the vertical circuit of that TV and it's pretty compact, not much to it, you have a, the oscillator and the output, got here that little transformer, this I believe is part of the sink separator, and this right here is that exploded electrolytic capacitor. What can cause this thing to collapse? We can have a bad DCL82, of course. There can be a voltage missing here. Those are the first two things to, to try. We can put the oscilloscope here and see if we have the drive signal to drive the output. We cannot test here. This, this is very high voltage pulses. Will probably damage the oscilloscope. This line here comes from the boost voltage and if this capacitor is even slightly leaky it will cause this to go up so it, it, will, it could cause the, the collapse also to put the, the cathode to positive even a slight leakage from this capacitor will cause problems, and so it's a primary suspect. We also have here a potentiometer that might be bad. But uh, I really think that this guy is going to be leaky. This one might be shorted, and it probably damaged the tube, because if the oscillator part was running but the output not, it will probably it would probably get very hot and it's not getting even warm at all so i think the this tube is gone got your linearity control it's not that's not our problem right now it's the vertical output transformer might be bad i hope not this might be bad i also hope not this is would be even worse this connections go to the yoke it's really a very very simple well it's not simple but very compact and with few components compared to the typical German TVs this would be more something out of a American television this era not from a german tv german tvs would have typically double or triple the components on this stage all right